started. Um, thank you a lot for all for being here. So uh, the one of the main reasons I'm here is we uh, a group of people decided to write a, uh, a history book, uh, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, and I have copies of it for sale. So I'm going to do a couple of three things really. I'm going to talk about the scouting collection that we have here at the Lawrence History Center, uh, and then. I'll talk about my sharing of the collection, so I've been able to, to find people uh, who have relatives or who, uh, who are major players in the Boy Scouts, uh, and I've been able to, to do a lot. Our, our uh, mission statement here is to collect, preserve, and share the history of Lawrence and its people, so that's kind of fulfilling our mission. And then the last thing we'll talk about is uh, the book that was put together it's called Camping with the Spirit of Adventure, and I'll go a little bit into what that book is. And then uh, afterwards, I'll, of course, answer any questions, but if you'd like to buy a copy of the book, um, we'll have them for sale. So uh, here in the Lawrence History Center, there's, we heard about the archive collection, and Mita talked a little bit about it, um, but we have a, a large Boy Scout collection. And so I always like to start, like, where does, where, how did that come to, to the Lawrence History Center? And so the North Essex Council, which was the uh, council that orchestrated the Boy Scouts, was founded in 1925 here in Lawrence, right down the street on the Common. Uh, and from 1925 through 1993, it operated as its own council and then merged in 1993 with the Haverhill Council and uh, the Salem Lynn Council uh, to form the Yankee Clipper Council. Uh, and at that time, the Lawrence office was consolidated uh, into the Haverhill office. And uh, the story goes that the Boy Scout office in Lawrence was emptied and stuff was put in a dumpster. And uh, this guy named Al Koch, who's, uh, whose son's here today, this is Al right here, yeah, gotcha. supposedly went dumpster diving and collected uh, what would turn out to be over 100 boxes of material. <coughs> and so there's, uh, this is a picture when the archives are up above us in the second floor here. It's since moved, but there's, uh, well over a hundred uh, boxes of everything, every uh, piece of paper, every registration form from 1925 through 1993, canceled checks, um, eight millimeter film, uh, photographs, blank carbon negatives, just, just everything um, is here and it's well preserved. And it's, in my opinion, probably the, the largest Boy Scout collection that I've been able to find anywhere uh, that's, that has the, the depth of uh, material. Um, so how did I find out about this collection? I, I'm a high school teacher. I was working at Lawrence High School and my students had come on a field trip to the Lawrence History Center in uh, 2010, 11-ish. Uh, and they came back to school and they were telling me about looking at our principal's uh, yearbook photo from when he was in high school. So I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. I had never been here. So I Googled search the Lawrence History Center and this was, uh, this was the news article in their news stream. Literally, when I opened up, it said North Essex Council uh, Boy Scout records. And this um, scout, Braden Charles uh, Nyberger, did for his Eagle Scout project, organized the records uh, into nice boxes. And so I had no idea this existed. And I'd been active in scouting. I'd been a, a, a camper at Camp Onway, which I'll talk about. Um, the camp was sold in 2007, uh, which is a huge disappointment to a lot of people. Um, but I was like, oh, there, maybe there's some information here. So I remember calling Amita, and uh, it was like Saturday morning. I drove over here, and it was like Christmas Day because you were just opening these boxes and all these old photographs uh, of, of the camp and other things were here. Um, so there are other historical societies with scouting collections. There's actually an international uh, like register or registry that has, uh, by town, um, different places where different collections exist. So the Bay Shore, which is Lynn, there's some records in Lynn, there's some <coughs> ones in Gloucester. But these are like one or two boxes normally donated by a person, so they only span five or ten years when a certain individual is involved in scouting. Uh, our records here uh, span over 70 years and are so comprehensive that I can tell you uh, what scouts were sleeping in what tent in oh, Camp Onway in 1950 and 60s. Um, so it's, it's really remarkable. Uh, so one of the things that I've been doing with the collection is working to digitize records. Uh, all the executive board minutes uh, were present, so I 
digitized every single one of them um, into searchable PDFs, uh, removed hundreds of thousands of staples. Um, <laughs> I, have a, well, I have a jar of all the staples that I've done. Uh, and then, so there's also unit records. So each troop, when you registered or when you would, uh, had an advancement, when you uh, moved up a rank, uh, there's records of that. And each year you had to re-register, so there's uh, recharters. Um, for each unit. So they were in boxes that looked something like this. They weren't very well organized, but they're all there. Uh, so I went through and did a, uh, a database of every single troop of the years that it existed. Uh, and then we, I would take these home. Um, the, they were nice to let these things leave the premises, but I uh, now reorganized them, brand new file folders, acid-free labels, um, and took all the staples out. So it helped to, to actually make it a little bit more consolidated, but, um, but they're all there. So I'm still working on that. There's, there's 20, 30, 40 boxes full of records. Uh, and then I've been also scanning and restoring photographs. There's, you can come and look around afterwards, but there's some panoramic photos that are here. Uh, they were in pretty rough shape. So using uh, Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, I've been able to digitally, uh, restore them to a, to a better state. And uh, the plume printing, which is a printer here in Lawrence, it's owned by Scott Morton, uh, was able to print uh, brand new copies of the panoramic so that they're not as, not as old and dirty. Um, let's see. So I thought I would show you some interesting finds that are in the archives. Uh, this is a photo of Camp Onway in 1987. It's the staff. Uh, and sitting uh, right here is uh, Mayor Dan Rivera. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a, there's a nice photo of it. So there's a, there's a lot of other people, uh, I think Jack Fascioni is in there, um, Al Mundry, uh, Dan Ryan, so there's a lot of other familiar faces. Uh, and let's see, there's also video. So someone had a video camera at Camp Onway over the years, and so I, in, this doesn't need this room, but this is video of Dan Rivera uh, during Olympic week. Um, and we'll see, I think I can get this play, let's see. This <laughs> <laughs> oh. Quick clip, but there he is. There he is. So, <clears throat> and, and as a result of that, I have a deputy mayor. I told him I wouldn't, I wouldn't post that online. Um, <laughs> I think a payment should be made. To <laughs> <laughs> so this is an example of uh, of one of the records uh, for a local troop. This troop is from Andover. Uh, it's troop, I think, seventy six. So it says up there. Uh, and if you read through the list of names right down here, uh, that says James Leno. Uh, so that's Jay Leno um, when he was registered in scouting at twelve years old. And it looks like he had a couple of neighbors uh, from Clark Street that were also there. Uh, so Jay Leno was, an, uh, was a Boy Scout, not an Eagle Scout, uh, in Andover for, for a few years. Um, I reached out to one of his, his people, um, actually trying to find out if he camped at the Boy Scout camp, but I never heard back, so uh, I don't know. But um, so we found Jay Leno's records. So one of my uh, most exciting things I've been able to do is, is to share some of the information that's in these archives with different people. Uh, so I, when I learned that we had all this information here, I picked a couple key people that I wanted to do some research into. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about each of them. Bertrand E. Horn um, was a businessman from Lawrence. His family owned Watts Water, still a uh, majority shareholder. He was a council president and was responsible for uh, for buying and paying off the mortgage for Camp Onway. I'll talk a little bit more about it in a second. Dr. Nathaniel Stowers was a, uh, I believe he was a dentist from uh, Andover. He was one of the earliest uh, commissioners in the Scouts. Um, Abbott Stevens was from North Andover, <coughs> vice president uh, from North Andover for many years. And then Harvey Pop Baden was the Scout executive for over 25 years. He started in 1925 when the council was formed and retired in uh, the mid-1950s. So we'll talk a little bit about the different people. So uh, Bertrand Horn, he was an avid outdoorsman. Uh, his son was involved in scouting um, and he got involved in Andover through his church. He served as the council president from 1930 through 1932. And during that time, the uh, property at Camp Onway was purchased 
Um, it was purchased in 1929, and then he became president. He was on the camping committee. Uh, so 1929, the stock market crashes, and our council was not able to raise the funds to help pay off the mortgage. And so because he was council president, uh, Bertrand Horn kind of felt that it was his responsibility to, to make sure that the camp was able to stay open uh, and that we could pay it. So he, uh, over a 10-year period, paid off the entire mortgage uh, himself uh, so that the scouts weren't burdened with that financial uh, liability. Because of that, the dining hall was named in his honor. Uh, there's some photos around, and I think there's some photos later that I'll show you. Um, and he, he bought Watts Water when he was younger, and his family uh, actively involved in the Watts Water Company for, for many generations. I believe they're still a majority shareholder. Uh, so here's the dining hall, actually, uh, that was named after Bertrand Horn. This was the original dining hall on the property in 1929. The photo down there, I think, is from 2007, maybe a little bit later, 2013. Um, and I believe, I think you can see there's a pine tree here. And I think that's this pine tree that's over here. Uh, these are executive board minutes that I looked up, and it says uh, somewhere they added the piezas to the dining hall headquarters and headquarters building. The building obstructed the view of the lake from the pine grove. Uh, so it's been moved 60 feet. So I think they moved it back 60 feet, which would put it right around where that pine tree is. Um, so interesting that uh, executive board minutes were able to, to shine some light onto the earliest days of Camp Onway. This is George Horn, who was Bertrand Horn's son. Uh, he was in scouting for, uh, for about three or four years before he went off to a private uh, school. Uh, he was actively involved with Camp Onway. He donated the family's motorboat to the Boy Scout camp in 1968. Uh, so that's them there in the center. The Bertrand e. Horn's grandson, Timothy P. Horn, who's still alive, um, was also involved in the Boy Scouts. He donated a sailboat. And here's a newspaper article uh, with an award that he was getting um, from the Boy Scouts. I was able to meet Timothy Horn probably five years ago uh, at Watts Water. I shared him or gave him a copy of a book that was written by Jack Fascioni on the history of scouting. Um, his family was donating a lot of money, and then we sold Camp Onway, which was kind of his family's uh, legacy. And so the money kind of dried up, um, but I was able to tell him about all the great things we were still doing for scouting in Lawrence. Uh, and through the Horn Family Foundation, they've been donating for the last uh, five, six years. Uh, $10,000 to help our scouting efforts here in the city of Lawrence. Uh, so the Horn family is still very actively involved uh, in scouting to this day. Dr. Nathaniel Stowers was a, uh, he was one of the first commissioners. He was out of Andover. He was very instrumental in scouting in Andover in the early years. He, uh, he made a nature trail at Camp Bonner. That was one of his things uh, that he did. Um, and so I, I looked him up, actually, I, I Google searched him. I, I don't want to say stock, but I, I uh, tried to find out some information about it. And it turns out he has a son that's still alive, Clifford, who's like 93, 94, uh, living up in Maine. And so I was able to uh, visit, well, I was able to visit Clifford Stowers up in Maine. Uh, and I was actually to, to be able to share with him uh, the scrapbook that was put together on the nature trail, it's up here, you can read through it, that his father made. So I was, showed him the scrapbook that the historical society or that we got um, and he really appreciated that seeing photos uh, from his from his younger years he remembered Camp Onway and walking around the nature trail so uh, a good day nice nice gentleman um, so that was fun Abbott Stevens was uh, from the Stevens family from North Andover I still have not figured out how he got involved in scouting. I think through his church, he didn't have any children, he didn't have any sons, um, but he was the council vice president in, uh, in North Andover. Uh, and so part of the, what I did was I, I reached out to the Stevens Foundation, which is a huge supporter of the History Center here, and met with Josh Miner and was trying to find some more information about Abbott Stevens. Um, and the secretary at the Stevens Foundation, whose name is, uh, her name's Sandy, we're talking in the in her office, and she's like, "Oh, my my grandfather was involved in scouting. His name was attorney. He was an attorney, Arthur Thompson." Uh, so I was able to find Arthur Thompson's Silver Beaver application um, and shared it with her. Uh, and there was a handwritten note from her grandmother, and she recognized the handwriting instantly. Uh, so Sandy was able to share this with her mother, who would have been Attorney Thompson's uh, daughter. 
uh, which was neat. There's also, uh, let's see, there's also an Arthur A. Thompson Camping Award um, banner, which uh, I think we have, the History Center has uh, somewhere. Yeah, right here. So I was able to show this to Sandy, and she got a kick out of it, uh, that her grandfather had an award, camping award named after her. So then uh, Harvey Pop Bacon was the scout executive and was really a key person I was trying to, to find some more information about. He was hired uh, by the North Essex Council in 1925. Pre prior to that, he worked in Arlington with the Boy Scouts, and he spent the rest of his professional career uh, here with the Scouts in Lawrence. Uh, over 25 years, which if you were involved in Scouts now, Scout executives don't spend that much time in any council, um, let alone 25 years. He had three daughters. We didn't have any, ch any sons in the program, but his daughter, Eleanor, married Eric Planitzer, who was the first Eagle Scout in the North Essex Council. Uh, he was in Troop 2 in Lawrence. So Harvey Pop Bacon's uh, daughter married the first Eagle Scout. Uh, and I was able to find the granddaughter um, by looking at Eleanor's uh, obituary. She lived to be 105 years old. She passed away in 2015. Uh, she was the daughter of the late Harvey Bacon. Uh, and so, let's see, uh, it listed children. So what did I do? I, I looked them up on the internet. <laughs> uh, I stalked them and I found phone numbers and I called probably four or five telephone numbers. Uh, no one answered, I left voicemails. Uh, and this woman, Alita, calls me back like a week later. And it was, uh, it was right around Halloween. We were, I was at Central Catholic where I work now, setting up for a dance and she called me and I must've talked to her for an hour. Um, she couldn't believe that why I was calling. I was, you know, trying to find information about her father, who was the first Eagle Scout, and her grandfather, who was Harvey uh, Bacon, the Scout Executive. And so uh, we got in this dialogue back and forth. This is uh, this was her father, Eric Planter. These are the first three Eagle Scouts in the North Essex Council. Um, her father also worked at Camp Onway during its first uh, summer, and I think for many uh, for a few summers after that. Uh, his, so Alita was uh, very happy. She saved a lot of his scouting memorabilia. Uh, they lived in Pennsylvania at the time, and she we talked, and she would say, you know, no one. I've got grandsons, but they're not really interested in the scouting stuff. They weren't in scouts. Um, you know, I've always been trying to find a place to to donate this stuff to, and so it, it was kind of a little relationship building. Um, she was afraid, you know, that we wouldn't do anything with it. And I was like, no, 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 the, the Lawrence History Center is great. I shared her website. She watched her and, and went to her website and I think uh, became a little bit more confident. So she donated a whole bunch of uh, materials to us. And so one of the things she donated was her son's uh, uniform. And so which has these beautiful Camp Onway felt patches on them. Uh, and he's sitting right here in the front uh, in the photograph from 1930 wearing his uniform. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool, uh, and really a great find and a great addition um, to our archives. So I'll be sending her an email later today saying the uniform is back out, and I was uh, sharing it. So she'll she'll greatly we'll come down in a second. Really appreciate that. Uh, so recently, like two days ago, Susan sent me a text message and said, "Oh, this 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 woman came in and she donated some." Uh, materials from her brother who was in Troop 2 in Lawrence. His name was Fred Roshback. Did I say that right? Yeah. Um, and so I said, oh, let's see. So let's, uh, uh, let's look him up. So this is a photograph of Fred that uh, his sister Ann donated to us. And I think she was asking about the, the headdress. And I, I don't know if it's the exact same headdress, but we do have a headdress in the archives um, from the Order of the Arrow. So I, I'm not sure it's the exact <coughs> ones. I'm sure there were several of them, but this is uh, this is one of the headdresses that we have here, and I think this was made by Jack Ingalls, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I'll leave that up here so you can come you can come look at that. <laughs> to make them, yeah. So then, uh, so I did a quick search of Fred in the uh, in some of the digitized records. And he's mentioned in the uh, 1954 executive board minutes, the Order of the Arrow took uh, 14 new boys and four new men at the last ordeal held at Camp Onway in September. 
I've already had the chief call uh, Dimitri and, and member Fred Roshback visit one of our troops to talk about camp after the Camp Onway films have been shown. So, uh, so Fred's, Fred's there. And then earlier today, before the meeting started, I walked over, uh, found the troop, the Lawrence box, and was able to find uh, Fred's uh, registration records that show his, uh, his time and tenure at, in Troop 2. So that was, that was neat. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the book, um, Camping with the Spirit of Adventure. So the Yankee Clipper Council, which was the formation of the North Essex Council from Lawrence, the Lone Tree Council from Haverhill, I think I listed them out, um, and the, uh, the Greater Low Council and the North Shore Council uh, merged a couple years ago with Boston to form the Spirit of Adventure Council. And so a group of us got together uh, and decided to put a, a history book together on all these scout camps that were uh, utilized one point or the other in, uh, in the past by anyone that lives in that uh, council territory, which stretches from the New Hampshire border just south of, uh, of Boston. So Brian LeBeo, who uh, is from Lowell and uh, camped at Wataka, uh, and is the president of the Key Foundation, which is like an alumni association for, uh, for scouts, was the primary uh, motivator behind this project. The three primary camps that we're, we're focused on were Camp Onway from Lawrence, Camp Watucka from Lowell, which is still a Boy Scout camp. Camp Onway was sold in 2007. Uh, Lone Tree Scout Reservation from Haverhill, which is a Cub Scout camp. Uh, some other former camps um, from this area, from the Acre Cooper Council, were Indian <coughs> Pond, and Osharko uh, Scout Reservation, which were the camps from the Lynn and Salem Mass uh, Councils. So the book um, is like a, a then and now photographic uh, history of the different camps. So if you were in Scouts in 1925 uh, in Lawrence, Camp Onway wasn't purchased yet. Uh, so they camped in at Camp Manning, which is on Pumps Pond, and it was owned by the Malden Area Boy Scout Council. Uh, so these are sometimes called trolley camps. You, would, uh, you didn't have to travel too far, the kids from Lawrence. Um, probably took a bus or a streetcar to, uh, to get there. Um, and then uh, scouts from the Malden area also came up. Uh, in the early years of the North Essex Council, the Haverhill the Boy Scout units were also part of this, uh, of this council, so they camped here as well. Uh, so then after that, before after Camp Manning, it was kind of decided the camp was a little too close. It was within the council, the North Essex Council territory. So we moved our camping operations uh, to Camp Chadwick, Chadwick, which was being run by the Greater Lowell uh, Council. And this was in uh, Dunstable, Mass, I believe. And the Boy Scouts from Lawrence camped there from 1927 through 1929. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Camp Chadwick in 1927. They had this uh, giant whale boat, um, which was recreated recently at Camp Watucka. They built a new uh, boat. Um, so there's this great panoramic in the Haverhill Public Library uh, library of this camp and someone said why is the camp from Lowell why is there a photo in, in Haverhill and it's because the Haverhill scouts were with the Lawrence scouts in the North Essex Council and they were camping in, with the Lowell scouts uh, for many years or from 1927 to 1929. So we'll talk a little bit about Camp Onway. Um, camp Onway was a uh, camp well before the Boy Scouts bought it so uh, from like the 1900s through about 1929 it was uh, run by the uh, YWCA and YMCA in New Hampshire. Uh, so this was Camp Onway for Girls, second season. This is back in 1922. Uh, and so girls from, uh, from the New Hampshire area would go to Camp Onway. Uh, here's a photograph of them camping in uh, one of the tents, platform tents. This was the Exeter Community Council uh, girls' work. Uh, that's a scene, I think this is, if you've been to Camp Onway, this is right around where the amphitheater was. I don't think that cabin was there um, when the Boy Scouts owned it, but that's the girls uh, enjoying some time on the lake. Uh, so the Boy Scouts were searching for a camp property, and so they spent years trying to find a suitable spot. Uh, this is talking about looking at Country Pond in Newton, New Hampshire. Country Pond is where uh, Lone Tree Scout Reservation is, um, but it just wasn't, wasn't able to, uh, they weren't able to get it. And so finally, uh, over the summer, they found a, a piece of land in Raymond, New Hampshire. Irving Sargent was a lawyer that was involved with the Boy Scouts. 
Uh, and he, with the scout executive and the camping committee, bought a site that was owned by Edward Healy in uh, Raymond, New Hampshire, on the shores of Lake Onway, uh, 40 acres. Uh, it was currently being used by the Exeter Community uh, Council for Girls. And so they bought the camp, they bought all the supplies. Uh, in 1929 and 1930 was the first summer that the Camp Onway was opened. Uh, so here are some, uh, some photos from the early years. Uh, the sign that this woman's holding is the same sign that's over there. They used to have directional signs to Camp Onway. Uh, this was, I think, the Abenaki campsite. They had patrols of eight. Uh, this gentleman standing right here is Jack Healy. Yes. Um, the, that building over there is the administration. It was called the administration building or cabin seven. It's still standing to this day. Uh, it was a great building. This was the dining hall. It was the original one on the property. Uh, so this is the, the first camp staff in, in 1930. Uh, Harvey Bacon's sitting somewhere in here in the middle. Uh, and then Eric Planitzer, I believe, is that gentleman right there. It's a nice picture. This is from uh, Jack Healy from Methuen and the rest of his, uh, his tent mates. Uh, he ran the camp newspaper for many years, um, which I have copies, digital copies of their copies of the newspaper if you want to read through it. Uh, so this was the administration cabin building. Uh, and then this was the last summer at Camp On, right? the same building with the camp staff in 2007. I'm sitting right about here. Uh, so. The really building looks a little worn out, but but still there. Oh, so uh, so that's that's most of my presentation. Um, I didn't want to spoil too much of the stuff in the book because I didn't want you to buy the book. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so spread out around the, the room if you want. Uh, as you're walking around, there's a lot of different uh, photographs. There's uh, patches, um, and if you've anyone has any questions on anything, I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. I got a couple. I got a question. Sure. Boy Scout. Yeah. The mid twenties and the and I think it was Troop Seven. I'm not too sure if they're holding a lot of it. The only other thing I remember is that my scoutmaster used to work for Lincoln Foods. Huh. He was part of the family who owned it, and he used to get candy bars wholesale. Two for a nickel. <laughs> yeah, well, see me after. I've got. I have a list of all the scout troops in Lawrence, okay. so I can. I can certainly look yeah. up Troop Seven. Mark, in the materials, have you come across any um, any music for the camp songs that we were taught? Yep. There's uh, there's camp song books. I might have one up here, but there, yeah, there's. Uh, multiple copies of different versions of all the songs. So for everybody's edification, here's the second part, the last part of the camp hymn. And old oh dear, thy sweet memory, just for old time's sake. Yeah, that was all right. Very good. <laughs> yeah, it's for sale in the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> so Mark? Yeah. Oh. Just, I'm just curious how many people in the room are scouts. Yeah. Well, Raise your hand if you're involved in scouting in one capacity or the other. A lot of people. And it comes awesome. up like <laughs> Yeah. Two questions. One yeah. is, um, explain what the round table is, if you, if you remember or know. And the other is, was Camp Wywood by the YWCA near Camp Wanway? I've never, yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of that, that camp. I didn't know what it was. Um, the round table, like the, you're talking about like a camp, the Boy Scout round table meetings. Okay. It, I, it goes back to, I think late seventies, where the dead mothers got together at the Boy Scout office, where roughly where the unemployment office used to be in downtown Lawrence, Pep Pep Tin Park. Yep. And we would discuss arts and crafts and better ways to help our meetings, and they'd get a little beat. And one year, I actually got the, all the letters that said round table for perfect attendance. So I <laughs> well, I will tell you that there are. Um, attendance rosters for pretty much every single meeting that was ever held um, in there. And I, I've gone through them, so like commissioner meetings, uh, den mother meetings, um, just sign-in sheets that have everyone's name on them. So that's uh, that's one of the things I want to digitize at some point, but that's they're all they're all over there in the archives. Yeah? What troop was the first Eagle Scout from, you know? So the, there's some debate about this. Um, because scouting did exist in Lawrence before 1925, before it was an organized council, and there's the records from 
1910 through 1925 um, are spotty. They're not really here. So the first Eagle Scout in uh, the North Essex Council was from Troop 2. Um, and it was uh, Eric Planitzer. Those The photograph I had up there was the three of them. There's a scrapbook up here actually from Troop 2 that lists all the Eagle Scouts from the first few years. Um, but he was the first, and the first three were from, from I Troop 2. Credit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Troop 2 was uh, was a force to be reckoned with. They, uh, they had a longtime scoutmaster, Ed Boothman. Um, they were at the German Presbyterian Church. Uh, Ned Schwartz was uh, after there. Um, and between Charles Body and myself, we have pretty much their entire records. Um, and some of them exist here at the History Center. Did, were, there, were there Eagles before the formation of the council? Yeah, so there would have been Eagle Scouts. Uh, they would have registered or been processed directly from National. Um, and I called National trying to see if they had any records of any of those people. Um, they, they can't find anything down there. So, uh, so unfortunately, uh, unless there's newspaper articles, which we have a few, there's not, not too many records. Yeah. So when are you going to become a history teacher? <laughs> I know I teach math. I don't teach history. Yeah. So just my spare time, this is what I do. This is your, what you do for fun, right? Yeah. 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 I just have to, I always have the last word in <laughs> But I have to on behalf of the women behind the Eagles, all right? <laughs> Camp Onway was wonderful. If you had uh, the adult believers and so forth, they are working with the boys. They had a beautiful beach <coughs> for the women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a three years. Cooking. Yeah. They had family, and they were very, very good to the women and support the men because, you know, after all, why should I stay home with five girls while well, we thought they were two boys? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they even built, they had a family campsite. I think they used what was the Girl Scout. Uh, Maybe. The original Girl Scout. Uh, all right, I think they were that uh, mm -hmm. area. And you know, it was civilized and gave it to us. Huh. It, was, it was really uh, they were it was a great group, great group. Yeah. Shall I tell them about this? You can. Yeah, that's this is uh, for anyone that went to the camp. They always had at the end a campfire, the final campfire. Yeah. Yeah. And Chief Patrick Conway would get in the canoe and he float the the water with two kids, right? So one year, my son, now 64 years old, he was a cook. And David was to be chief at the time. Well, the first thing we did was go down to Reading, where there was a Native American who knew how to make the headdress, all right? Now, there were 76 feathers in the real headdress because there are 76 steps from Cub Scout to Eagle. Mm -hmm. All right? They can't be, <coughs> they cannot be Eagle feathers because they're preserved, so you have to do with us. So we got these all together, okay? And he had been to film once, so we had that kind of thing. All right? But unfortunately, he said, Ma, I need a uniform. And I don't know how to thread an eagle. <laughs> so I took some men's pajamas, <laughs> All right. All right. And we stitched up some fringe. No. Right. Okay. And there we had the last campfire. And David Gerard comes floating apart with his 76 feathers and pajamas. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was very impressive. <laughs> the last campfire. Put past the Conway, the picture was always over the dining room on fire. Mm -hmm. All right, but, you know, happy men, happy. Yes, absolutely. We were there. Yeah. Where does the name Onway come from? Um, I think from Chief Patrick Conway. Mm -hmm. Conway. Yeah. Conway. So the um, who like a ruler in that area territory. Uh, the lake itself is Onway Lake, so I, that's where the name came from. Uh, 
So when the scouts bought the camp, they didn't change the name of the camp. It was Camp Onway before that, and they kept the same name. Uh, the the uh, it's Camp Lincoln now. The YMCA, which was camping at Camp Onway from <coughs> 19 teens to 1929, uh, bought a new prop property. It's Camp Lincoln. It's currently run as a as a uh, day camp. Uh, but they have all these scrapbooks from when they were at Camp Onway, which I was able to go and look through. And some of the photos that were in here uh, were from that. So it was pretty unique that the, the Boy Scouts kept the same name of the camp. Um, but uh, that's why you can see Camp Onway for girls on that pamphlet that I showed. So Mark, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you digitized records on this website here? No, they're on that computer right there. <laughs> um, we're in the process of, of trying to figure out how to do that. There's there's quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping to make it more and more public. Because I, I would imagine a lot of scout alumni would be yeah. interested in that database. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you say they sold the camp in 2007? Yep. Yeah. Do yeah. so they have a yeah. camp today? Yeah. So the, uh, is that your How question? How did they sell it? I yeah. Guess. So the, uh, uh, the scouting population, obviously, in, in the greater Lawrence area was on a decline. Um, and so the Yankee Clipper Council was operating two Boy Scout camps, and they weren't really able to fill both of them to full capacity. And so in 2007, uh, they did a study of all the camp properties, and the result of that study was the recommendation to sell one of the parcels of land. And so uh, at one point it was going to be Lone Tree, the Cub Scout camp, and then eventually uh, it came to be Camp Onway because uh, they got an offer from the... Uh, Church of the Latter-day Saints to buy the property to use as a girls' uh, church retreat camp. And so um, there was a group of us that were not happy with that that proposal. We thought that they should be uh, focusing on getting more scouting in Lawrence to fill the camp. Um, but instead, uh, the vote was, was taken and they sold the camp in 2007. I got about a million and a half dollars. Um, some way, might say it was not spent in the best ways, but uh, they were able to consolidate all the camping operations to one camp and really focus uh, on Camp Otaka and, and provide a much better program, I think. Uh, so the camp is now called Zion's Camp. It's owned by the, the LDS Church. Um, they're really, really open to the scouts. Uh, a lot of troops still camp there on the weekend. We had a uh, reunion up there, 2013, I think, uh, and they've taken really good care of the property. Uh, which was something that the Boy Scouts weren't really able to, to keep up with with the maintenance of owning all these properties. So uh, I'm happy that it's still a camp. It's, it looks pretty much exactly the same, a couple new buildings, um, but it's there and, and people get to use it and the Scouts get to use it. So that's, that's good. Um, my mom was a, a, a dad mother and so I was around studying a lot, but um, I, don't, I don't know if I'm even missing the address, but status of scouting in Lawrence today? Sure, yeah, so uh, at one point there was a troop and thing at every, you know, at every church, every community center. Um, and so scouting did go through a major decline in the city. Uh, and there have been a lot of efforts to, to restart it. And so recently uh, there's a small group of people which is called the Beacon of Freedom uh, District that looks at helping to start scouts in inner city areas. Uh, Lawrence is one of our main focal points. Uh, so there's currently no troops in Lawrence. The last troop, I think, was at St. Patrick's Church that uh, folded probably five years ago. Um, but we do have three Cub Scout units or two Cub Scout units uh, and an Explorer post. So the Weatherby School and the Oliver School both have Cub Scout units, which uh, I don't know about this school year, but I think last school year I had like 200 kids enrolled. Um, and then the police department started an Explorer post, which is like a different branch of scouting. Uh, and they've been running the Explorer post for like the last five years. Um, so it's it's there. We've been in talks with Bellatini Academy. We've been in talks with Boys and Girls Club uh, to try to get something uh, going at those two organizations as well. Um, but it's, it's tough. There's a lot of economic challenges. There's a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, Latino population is they're new the scouting's new to them. They don't you know their their grandparents or their fathers weren't involved. So just kind of explaining what our program is and, and the the leadership qualities that it instills, it's a it's a learning curve for everyone. So uh, there's a small group of us that are working to kind of 
push uh, scouting into the city more and more, um, but it's a slow process, um, but one that we're, we're doing, so, yeah. Yeah. Mark, as a, as a former member of uh, a, star, a, a, a star scout, and a uh, two, two very bad short of Eagle, and a member of Troop 15, our, um, our scoutmaster was Richard Tekesian. Yes. And um, it, the sponsoring church was the First Calvary Baptist Church. And um, representing all the boys and girls and uh, parents and, and uh, brothers and sisters that enjoy Camp Longway, I am the voice of all those people when I say thank you so much for gathering all this because for this one guy making it personal, it means the world. I yeah. hear with tears in my eyes. <laughs> uh, but they're tears of joy, just as Mary said, um, because it was it it's an important part of my life. Yeah. And, uh, and I still do some of the things that I was taught. <laughs> 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 so uh, my quick Dick Tekesian story, uh, there's, he, he took a lot of photographs and uh, his family actually donated all the stuff to the, oh, there's a scouting museum up in Manchester, oh, yeah. which is kind of inaccessible, unfortunately. Um, but I don't know, 10, maybe, probably 10 years ago, my mom was driving in North Andover and in something, I think a spider startled her. She hit some mailbox driving down Dale Street. So my dad goes over to try to fix the mailbox, and it turns out it's Daniel Tahitian, uh Dick Tahitian's son, whose mailbox my mom hit. And so we, small world. Um, so I actually, I, I went over a, a day later or something to, to, to apologize for my mom's actions, um, but to talk about the Boy Scouts, and he, he was able to share some photographs with me. Um, he's, he, he works right across the street, or right down the street from Central Catholic at Don Canada Auto. Um, but yeah, he, uh, I sent him a copy of the book and I really appreciate it. This region was, uh, was a rock star amongst, uh, amongst a lot of the people. So, yep. All right. So thank you.